then it'll automatically oh, pop gotcha, up. Gotcha. I see what you're saying. All right, so we're rolling now. Thanks, sir. I can't even get a lady open for its own weeks with me. At least not one that I like. Yeah, I thought you got two Good. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Great. Gail. This Gail. We're ready? Yep. Yep. We'll be ready. Hang on. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not in there. Let me go get one. Yeah, highlighters don't work that way. Yeah, highlighters <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Yes, sir. It is 10 02, the 27th day of June, not 2022. I move that we have the special meeting of the Navarra County Commissioner's Court come to order. Second. Well, they're both spoke at the same time. I think he was louder. I think he was louder. <laughs> okay. Motion made by Commissioner Moore, uh, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, we are in session. I'd ask everyone to please stand for opening prayer, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And I ask Commissioner Grant to lead us in prayer, please, sir. Lord, thank you for this day and for the many blessings you give us each and every day. We ask that you uh, be with us today as we conduct the business of the county, help us do what's best and right for our citizens and the county. We ask that you uh, keep all of us safe and healthy, Lord. We ask that you uh, send some rain to us that we have in the forecast this week. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Maybe see. Okay, Mr. Gant. Thank you. Is your attack on? Hmm? Is your attack on? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Morning, John Gant from the Navarra County Volunteer Firefighters Association. The volunteer firefighters are very good, dedicated to their fire department. Where the people in the popular social media posts have put $4.99 a gallon of fuel in our own vehicles to come to your emergency. We know that you and our citizens appreciate the service we provide, but I need, need to make you aware that we are all facing a financial crisis. The current monthly payment per vehicle from the county for VFPs is $200. This amount has not changed since 2015, and we've seen many increases in our operating costs over seven years. Most notable with the increase in gasoline and diesel prices, the VFPs are having difficulty funding fuel purchases to operate their trucks. The cost of a gallon of gas in Texas has increased from $1.97 in 2016 to $4.53 this past week, a 233% increase in our operating expense. It now averages over $150 per call per truck just in fuel costs for us to make a call. On behalf of all the VFDs in the county, the Navarro County Volunteer Firefighter Association would like to request consideration during the budget process of an increase in the monthly per truck payment. We recognize that the county funds are limited and there are many critical and important projects that require funding and we want to be good community partners, which is why we haven't come before you until this issue became critical. Anything you can do to assist us would be appreciated. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. It, it will be on our agenda then, during budget time. Uh, we've got a bunch of that very thing to cover. Okay. Yeah, a whole bunch. Okay, Dottie. Thank you. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Uh, can I ask why is this a special session? Because it's just way it's labeled. It's the second one of the month. The first one is the the regular set. I see. Second one is called a special oh, session. Okay. Even though we do them all the time, we've been doing them for the last 16 years like this way. I mean, <laughs> and probably a long time before that, too. I see. Anyway, <laughs> this, I'm this falls under the, this is where we've always done it. Yep, this is where we've always done it. I have worked elections since 1998. <laughs> and during that time, I studied election fraud because I'm not a cheater and I don't know how to cheat. And so I had to learn how do they do that so I can watch out to help stop it. Because as soon as the legislature of a state closes up one way, the cheaters will figure out another way. I brought you all my copy of 2000 Mules. I don't know if anybody went to the theater who only showed half the times that they were going to in less days than they were planning on it. And I challenge each one of you to take this. I was going to start with James, but he's not here. So Eddie, I'm going to start with you. And I'm going to leave it out here for Kim to kind of pass it around. Please take your family, friends, whatever. And um, so we we didn't have this way of cheating happen here in Navarro County, but you should be aware of it so that we make sure that that doesn't happen, installing these drop boxes around the county. But there are many, many ways to cheat, and we need to stop all of the ways. Sometime around 2016, Dr. Laura Presley had her election stolen for city council in Austin, Texas, and they did it with the Heart Electronic Machines. And she got the numbers using a FOIA request and found out how they did. Then she went and checked the legislature and what they said, if you're gonna run electronic machines. These are things that need to happen. Those things were not happening anywhere in Texas. So it's not just Travis and it was, was it just here. She went and spoke to every county in Texas. My group, the Conservative Society of Monroe County had her here. She came back again several times, talked to the Republicans and everything. Because of that, Navarro County changed the machines so that we now have paper ballots. Now, the ballots are not counted by what person I say, it's a barcode. I don't know how to read barcodes. I don't know what the programming is on the inside of that machine. I, they, it, in, in uh, you know, the six places in, across the nation, where it mattered because of the electoral college. They had in the machines, this is not a glitch, it's a feature. Trump got half, uh, three quarters of a vote and Biden got a, a one and a quarter vote. So that was not a, not a glitch. It was a feature that they could change the machine in the machine. I want, uh, oh, in the, in the investigations, uh, over all the counties, he, they, uh, Mike Lindell did, you know, almost every county in the United States. And it showed that Navarro County had 1,500 votes that were changed in our county. Now, I get one. Somebody might have gotten 1,500. I don't count that as a fair election. I worked real hard so that we have paper ballots. And the reason why is so that we can check the machines. That's the whole reason to have paper ballots so that you can verify what the machine said is what really happened. So I want you all to remember that you work for us. We the people have the right to know whether our voting machines are accurate or not. I, if you do not allow this count, then we the people can only conclude you have a reason to hide the accuracy of the machines. Do you have? You know, do you want voter fraud to exist in Navarro County? Don't you want to be sure that the machines are accurate? I can't work the elections as an election judge, which I did for years, because I can't put my reputation on the line for a machine I don't trust. So I don't know how many people have quit working in the election, but you've got to have workers in the election to run an election. And, and I won't put my reputation on it until I am sure that the machines we're using are accurate with him. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bill? Okay. Uh, <coughs> Dave Burns, thank you. Uh, Bill Carson, I am the 
Republican representative and the presiding judge over the central counting station in our county and the absentee ballots in the county. The 2,000 mules, if you saw it, it's a big deal. It's not a big deal in Rivera County. We, uh, these girls are part of my team, but, uh, Linda Mertz and her team, uh, Mike Black and his team, we all represent the political parties in the state, I mean, county, and, and we are impartial, we're fair, we trust each other. We trust the mail out, the absentee ballots. We trust the, everything that we do, that I trust the judges to bring me the data that they're given on that little phone drive. Where I lack the trust is in that tabulator. It's not a voting machine. It isn't optical and just reads yes, no. It's a tabulator. It reads the ballots. It reads the barcode. It may be accurate. My petition to you, the judge, and this court was simply to have the county's authority and the county's gravitas to add to not a recount. I'm not looking for a recount. I'm looking for a hand count. I'm looking for a calibration of the machines. That's it. If the machines are accurate, drive on. I still don't trust the barcode and the tabulator, but if we can prove that our machines were valid on 19,000 ballots and it wasn't a hundred off, it wasn't a thousand off, it was not a dozen off, it was on. If it's not on, and we have a, and my request to y'all was basically to come back with a process. It wasn't, I want to do it with your permission now. What I wanted to do was offer to build a process with my team and come back and say, this is what we want to do, county government, with your gravitas. It isn't a recount. A recount was done. It was done electronically. It was done recounting whatever the tabulators tabulated. So it was fair. We just simply, and I have Linda Mertz, and I have Melanie Black. That's that's the red team, the blue team, and the gold team. I gave them a no hat for a while, but they told me, no, no, we wear a gold hat. And their critter is a porcupine. I love a libertarian party. <laughs> what my request was to build team, build a process, and then get the permission to do the process. Uh, so uh, my subject line was uh, my manufactured outrage that was just thrown out of court. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to our consent agenda. Uh, items five, six, seven, and eight, uh, which are items that we can pull off and talk about each one of them if we need to. But if that is not necessary or needed at this point in time, I'd ask for a motion to accept that consent agenda as a whole. So anybody? And I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as a whole. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Perry, seconded by Commissioner Grant. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We move on now to our regular agenda. Now, item number nine is uh, approving the burn ban order. I issued a burn ban order last week because it was getting serious. It is serious. It's going to be getting more serious if we don't get some rain pretty quick. Uh, my pasture out at the, where we live at Corbett, looks much like it did in 04 and 05 when we went nearly two years with no rain. Cows have a little bit to eat, but they don't have much. And then if I have to, and I think I'm gonna have to start feeding hay, it'll be the first time ever I've fed hay in summertime. Not good. Now, 
Well, what's standing burn? You bet. It'll be gone in about probably 15 minutes, 50 acres. The hay that I've got left from last year will be gone. And it'll take a little longer for those rolls to burn, but they will still burn. Uh, I have no plans to light a fire out there. Okay. And I do have a big pile of it to burn in a pit, but uh, deep pit, but I don't want to take a chance of anything getting out. Man, my great fear is someone driving down 2452 and throwing something out that's on fire, cigarette, fireworks, whatever it might would be that some fool might do. And uh, we got plenty of them. You know, there are those folks out there, no matter what, that uh, are apt to do that just for the fun of it. So last week, uh, the burn ban seemed to be the best thing, the first thing, first step to for us to go through uh, working with Eric Myers, our uh, emergency management coordinator. Uh, they'll talk with him. He's been talking with the state, uh, looking at all the fires. Y'all have seen the news, uh, the Calipanto County, that some ungodly number of acres has gone up. Uh, wind shifted, changed direction, burned more. Uh, you can't out, can't out guess it, and uh, you really can't. In some instances, it's really difficult to put out, especially out there. I didn't think they had hardly any grass out there. My place probably looks like a utopia compared to what they have out there. All that stuff will burn. So mine will be gone. So anyway, I did a uh, burn ban. Uh, within seven days of the judge doing the burn ban, the commissioner's court, the body of the commissioner's court has to approve, ratify that burn ban so that it'll stand. The, dip, the deal was mine would last seven days. Uh, this one that if we approve it and we've got it in the back of this, uh, it goes on until we lift it. That's what it's always been yeah, as part of the, our process. So anybody got anything you want to say? I'm, I'm going to throw it back open to y'all. I'd like to hear some, get some input from the public on this because it's serious. We're all involved with it one way or another. Jimmy, and Jimmy's our fireworks guy and I was visiting with him earlier about it and I appreciate you coming and uh, so if you want to speak, you can. We are aware of this, and we do remember 2005 when we remember the 90s. We don't carry the missiles and rockets. We pulled them this weekend. I read Eric Myers' post 7.30 Saturday morning. We were aware of all of this. We, there's certain items that I've been doing this over 40 years. Certain items that I know not to put on the shelf, and I've always done that. And like I told you earlier, the bigger the imprint that I put in the Bear County, the less change companies that put in the Bear County that don't give a crap if your pasture burns up. Yeah. So we're we pulled what I know can be a problem. And uh, my my son-in-law blamed me for no rain. Uh -huh. <laughs> my youngest daughter's husband, his fireman, he said all through Memorial Day. You prayed for the wind to stop. You forgot to pray for rain. <laughs> so we're now praying for rain. Yeah. Anybody else? Have a... I'd just like to say on behalf of the volunteer fire departments, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want you out anymore than you have to be out, of course. My department had five brush fires in one day. So uh, wow. just long to 87. But uh, that goes right back to those idiots he was talking about. Why would they burn brush? This kind of weather. Well, yeah. So maybe. Well, they have a lady that walked up to one of our fireworks stands. Like Rhonda, my daughter, told me about it. And she was talking about how hot it was. And she said, oh, we're in a burn band. And Rhonda said, okay, I will wait on you. Get rid of that cigarette. She turned and thumped on and thumped it. My daughter said, you can't do that. It will still burn. This intelligent Navarre County native said, Oh no, it will go out before it hits the ground because I'm not puffing it. Okay. There's you, your grass fires on the side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's nothing you do about that. Right. Well, at any rate, um, we are not banning fireworks and or the use of them, but you know, just basically being cautious about it. Um, but a lot of people don't understand that. You know, when you ignite something, and I believe it does talk in that uh, order about the ignition of explosives, 
whatever it might be that you know could cause a fire um you know me being the judge and and seeing stuff come before me in court i can guarantee you somebody would get sued over doing such uh if they uh, purposefully lit or exploded anything that caused a fire and the bad thing about all of that is you might it could be a violation or be considered a violation of burn ban if they caught if they did start a fire by doing that um, anything could be considered uh, anything could go to court plus then the civil part of all that hay being burned the pasture being burned having to get rid of cows because they don't have anything to eat it gets really messy can get really messy and so um, I think it's just you know uh, incumbent upon us as uh, to go forward with this new uh, burn ban order which ratifies mine and uh, hopefully people we, hopefully we'll get some rain number one but hopefully people will be cautious if they're going to do something like that and and or buy them and then wait I've done this many times buy them and then wait maybe months you know, un until I had opportunity, had grandkids down and want to see them, you know, go off or whatever. You have Fourth uh, of July on August 14th. You can have it whenever you want to have it, you know, yeah. get right down to it. You don't have to, you know, do it on the board. But uh, anyway, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think it's a good idea to keep it, keep it on. I was uh, contacted by several people over the weekend by phone and text and on and Facebook messages that wanted me to voice their opinions in here because they couldn't be here today. And they, of course, they wanted to keep the burn ban on, but they also wanted to, uh, they didn't want to have any kind of firecrackers of, of any kind, period. They, they wanted to ban smoking. But uh, no offense, Mr. Prince, I'm sorry, but I told them that I live in the real world. I, I, I got to I got to express the opinions of my constituents, and they want to ban any type of burning whatsoever, fireworks whatsoever. So I'm passing that on. And I couldn't remember. My understanding is if there is a burn ban in place, that covers any kind of fireworks that's launched into the air. Is that true or no? Well, just by what I said earlier, you know, the action of people. Popping, set, igniting fireworks and the fireworks exploding, going off, doing whatever they do. If they cause a fire, that's where you're going to be in trouble. Or the person that, that did that would be in trouble. Yeah. But that's a little consolation to the house to the person that just said it by and by. There, you, there you go. Exactly right. But uh, anyway, the next yeah. step would be once this is ratified, uh, would be for. Uh, me to just declare a disaster area and then we could ban everything couldn't sell them couldn't use them couldn't do anything with them well that's what i was getting from my constituents also mm -hmm. and also constituents all over the county that are friends of mine saying that they would contact their commissioner and they wanted a fireworks ban also and uh, it's very understandable why but like you said they will be responsible for anything that happens but it's hard to get blood out of a turnip and uh, it's hard to replace things that are that burn out yeah. and so uh, like i said no offense mr prince but that's what the people are telling me my household said and this wasn't me but my household said that uh, they are letting them have fireworks with a burn ban so that was uh, she was on board with the burn ban, but wondered why fireworks were going to be allowed. You know, it, it's funny, Bill. The way this is written um, is the state mandated way to do it. Mm. Okay, and it specifically states that the sale of fireworks and the use of fireworks mm. is not affected by this order. And we're doing all we can to mm -hmm. make the situation a little bit. Yeah. yeah, but. Like I say, the next step would be for me to declare a disaster and then put that in it. And uh, I'm working with uh, Eric on that, and we're looking at the storm down in the Gulf and its potential for coming up through here and so on uh, to see uh, exactly, you know. And, and we do have a cold front in Texas. 93 degrees is, is a cold front. <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost wore my coat today. 
<laughs> and how do you, do you have the opportunity to enact that between now and the fourth if necessary? Mm -hmm. yeah. Monday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can do it. All I gotta do is write it up. So, but I'm gonna work with Eric on that. He's in the state. So it's in stages. I'm sorry. It's in stages. Yeah. yeah. Now, back when we did. Uh, on the 14th of June, I uh, need to disclose this, of course, that where well, we had the opportunity on that at that commissioner's court meeting that we could have or, or one before or the day before, I think it's 13th when we had that meeting, that right. Uh, wherein we could have banned the sale and use of fireworks at that mm -hmm. point in time. Missiles and rockets. Sorry. Missiles and rockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, specifying. Right. Bigger missiles and rockets. Yeah. But uh, we didn't act on it at that point because the conditions weren't really right here for that at that point. They were to the west of us. You know, those people were already having problems out there, but it wasn't right here or uh, as far as the KBDI, the uh, each something other index that Texas A&M has come out with that no, kind of lets you know when things are more flammable than other times. KDBI has been around since dirt. Yeah. I, I think I've done this for 41 years. It's now 575, and we're at 570. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah the, the point to reach yeah. is 575. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was in the 400s when, that two weeks ago. I want to know what guy it is from AM that goes to every county and pulls dirt and ticks the yeah. density of it four inches down. Yeah, I don't know who does that either. But, um, Anyway, so that kind of discloses everything. You know, there's the picture. What we have to do or have to look at or consider and so on. Um, so as far as um, the immediacy, it would be to adopt this order here that ratifies my order. So just need a motion to do it. Make a motion that we do that. And I second it. Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Uh -huh. It is officially adopted. And, and judge, I don't mean to throw you under the bus, but the judge sets the burn ban. The judge does these things, and we ratify. Yeah. So I can't, they, I can't when they it. say the commissioners won't do something, I want to clarify how things work here. But he's the man. <laughs> I thought you didn't want to throw him under the bus. I said I didn't mean to. <laughs> Man, did, you, did, you, did you feel the weight of that? I'm back yeah. up again. <laughs> back up and hit him again. But, yeah. It's for him. And that's what manufactured outrage was pointed to. Uh, There's what say that's what my manufactured outrage was pointed to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good up. Um, any oppose on that motion? Then motion carries. And item number 10 is next, which is consideration of approving the tax collection report for May of 2022. Mr. Michael Dowd. Morning, y'all. Howdy. Morning. Morning. All right. So far, collections for tax year are twenty-five million seven hundred and seventy-one thousand three hundred and fifty-one dollars and sixty-one cents, which is ahead of last year at this time. Total collections of twenty-two million ninety-nine thousand nine hundred seventeen dollars and fifty-four cents, which is the difference of. Three million six hundred and seventy-one thousand four hundred and thirty-four dollars and seven cents, or one five five percent ahead. We have uh, collected to date ninety-five point ninety-six percent of our uh, levy. Last year's uh, collection rate was ninety-five point forty-one. So we're money ahead and still coming. Good. We're needed. But the fuel keeps going up. I think it's dropped a little bit though. All right. And if any of two, they're teasing us. Yeah, 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 teasing. All right, we need a motion on the uh, on item number 10, please. I move that we approve the tax collection report for May 2022 from Mike Dowd. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Moore, seconded by Commissioner Grant. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number 11 is consideration of approving a request from the Barrett County Fire, uh, Volunteer Firefighters Association for 9-11 assignments of the former 
Mustang VFD to be assigned to the Angus VFD. John? One of the responsibilities of the County Fire Association is to ensure that all the VFDs contracted with the county have an assigned service area. We take into consideration the location of the fire stations and equipment, response capabilities, and geopolitical boundaries to draw the territory lines to get the best possible service coverage to the property owners and the residents of an area. It was brought to our attention that the Mustang VFD did not sign a contract with the county back in September, and as such is not technically authorized to provide fire and first response services in Navarro County. Further, the department has not attended any of the association's meetings in the last 12 months, nor respond to requests for payments of their membership dues, and is therefore no longer a member of the county association. A report from the Nevada County Sheriff's Office dispatch shows that of the all the times that, that Mustang has been paged since September, they've not responded to a single call from that. Uh, paging Mustang and not getting a response causes a delay in delivering services to the area. This is critical minutes for both EMS and fires. After reviewing the facts and discussing with the closest neighboring department and assessing their capabilities and ability to provide fire and first response service in the Mustang territory, it was determined that this area was not receiving the services required and the association has voted to reassign the territory formally assigned the Mustang to the Angus BFD. Dispatch has been informed of this change and is manually dispatching Mustang calls to Angus now until 911 addressing can be updated and changed. To send the addressing change request to North Central Texas 911 addressing, the Sheriff's Office needs an official request from the Commissioner's Court. The resolution provided in your packet was drafted to provide a mechanism for the court to authorize the dispatch, to authorize dispatch to request the addressing changes with, with North Central Texas 911 addressing. I have any questions you might have. Questions, anybody? So this will reassign the Mustangs district to the city of Angus to have the people in the Mustang area's district covered. Correct, and, and in fact, that change, that assignment has already been made and it's being manually handled by the Sheriff's Department dispatching now. All they, but the manual process doesn't work well. You, we need probably the automated process. So we need to update 911 addressing so that when it comes up in 911, it shows Angus is the department to dispatch rather than Mustang. So the dispatcher doesn't have to go through the mental process of, oh, it says Mustang and that's an exception. So I had to do something different for them. So that's what we're asking you to do is to simply authorize the Sheriff's Department to make that addressing change. I mean, it's matter. So in future, in the future, if Mr. Cuban wants a fire department yeah. in his city, <laughs> don't laugh. He owns it and he, exactly. he's, he's a he's a heavy player. If he wants it, he can re uh, district the city of Mustang so, with yeah. the fire department. So, so let me let me give you a, a kind of scenario, an analogy that might help with that. Uh, the city of Eureka does not have a police department. They don't, they don't provide police or law enforcement services. And so the county has a responsibility to provide that service. Should the city of Eureka want to have a police department, they could form one. They could hire a police chief. They could go through the process of creating a, a police department and they could have, mm -hmm. whether they want to have paid police officers or volunteer police officers wouldn't matter. It's their choice and their, their liability and their responsibility to provide that service. If they chose to do that, they would enter into an interlocal agreement with the county to release the county from the responsibility of law enforcement area and assume it for themselves. Same thing could be done for Mustang, the city of Mustang, if they want to create a <coughs> fire department, take on fire uh, responsibilities, they simply need to create that, do whatever they need to do that, and then enter into an interlocal agreement with the county as, as other areas do within the county to say, we're going to provide fire protection services in our, and this is the, the agency that's going to do that. And I was the only sales tax payment there, and he kicked me out. So <laughs> nothing coming in. Is there anybody living there? Don't know. I doubt it. Don't know. I doubt it. I'm almost afraid to go knocking on doors, huh? <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not sure what you'd find. But rumor has it he has plans for that. And, and, and so yes. when when and if it happens, then certainly yeah, we don't it will be reassigned to the city of through an interlocal agreement. Exactly. Okay. And all this is good with the SO, I'm assuming. 
Yes, I talked with Captain Cagle and, and she was she's absolutely on board with that. As I said, they're actually manually doing that now. They're just looking to, to update the records so that it happens on that. Make it official. Make it official. Okay. I'm probably copying out of school here, but he is paying my son-in-law to keep the septic system up to code. So he's got plans. Yeah, he has plans. Good. Okay. 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 Maybe no discussion to the volunteer fire department. Mm -hmm. Who knows what he's going to put there? Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, all we're asking for you is to simply uh, adopt the resolution or, or ratify the resolution, which allows the sheriff's department to go ahead and make that request. Mm -hmm. What do y'all think? Well, this department has been on life support for some time it's been a topic of discussion for the last two years back and forth over different things so i think it's just time mustang has been valueless for years <laughs> they let him over well, he's got extra money <laughs> i may have a million dollar ladder, ladder truck down there one of these days yeah, two million dollars whatever it costs for me and park it up front on he may have a yeah. 10 story building yeah. Yeah. There's, well, no yeah, another, yeah, it's Mark, there's no telling yeah what's going on inside his head so. he makes you go down there all right we need a motion okay Damn. having having said that i move that we approve the request from the vera county volunteer fire departments association for 911 assignments of the former mustang volunteer fire department to be assigned to the angus volunteer fire department second and i agree and mr perry are you yes sir hey let me matter so, all yes. right motion has been made by commissioner moore seconded by commissioner perry all those in favor please say aye aye mm -hmm. any opposed motion carries Number 12 is consideration to accept the emergency service district one financial statement for fiscal year 2021 as required by RN section 775.082 of the health and safety code. I think it's just bookkeeping, gentlemen. Yes, sir. And I'll make a motion to accept the emergency service district one financial statement for the fiscal year 2021 as required in section 775.082 of the health and safety code. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Perry, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 13 is consideration of approving Chatfield water supply to cross Northeast County Road 1040 in precinct one. Mr. Grant. That's mine. It's just a standard road board. And I'll make a motion to approve the Chatfield water supply to cross Northeast County Road 1040 in Precinct 1. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 14 is consideration of approving an agreement between NCSO and Unique Digital Technology LLC for exchange upgrade. Somebody here to talk about that? Do you have a budget item line to pull that money from for that? As far as I know. Okay. Well, I had been told to ask that question uh, just simply because the auditor's office didn't know where it was coming from for this particular thing, unless you, there is a IT budget in your department, you know, a line item. <coughs> line item. I don't know that the number 15 item is on there. That's the total cost that they're anticipating on 15. I know I'm jumping one ahead, but yeah. it goes same with what you're saying. These two are together in effect. They are. Okay. Um, okay. 
the migration of the information is once the server is installed, all that <coughs> over is where that other number comes from. And it will, it should be built intermittently. That's the top hand side that they're estimating that it could go up to. So each week or however long, whatever segments of processes of moving that information over, then that's when they start billing. Okay. And it could be in this budget and it could fall some into the next budget. Um, and that, I don't know if it was budgeted with the servers. I don't know if we had that figure back then uh, last year to get the servers in this budget. But the migration, what happens if we don't, if we don't migrate that information, whatever email anyone sent us or we sent out prior to the migration will be lost. We won't have that access to any of that information anymore if we don't do the migration. It's pretty standard and mandatory, but I mean, I understand that these seem astronomical, but they will bill as the services rendered. They're not going to just bill us up front for that amount and then just kind of play it by ear. They'll bill as they do the work. Okay. All right, guys, what do y'all think? As long as there's a line item with the money in it coming out of the budget. Contingent. Mm -hmm. Okay, good motion. I make a motion that we approve an agreement between the Rivera County SO and Unique Digital Technology LLC for exchange upgrade. Second. Attention. Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now, number 15 is consideration of approving an agreement between NCSO and Unique Digital Technology LLC for customer care support. And that, that's the migration. Okay. That's the, the more substantial line item that would be billed. Intermittently, the first one is only going to be maybe a max of five hundred dollars for the security certificate to put that certificate on the server on our email. The second one is the migration of the information. That's the one that will be able to be billed as they perform the service and obtain and move and transfer the information over. So this is separate from the previous thing we just. They kind of both go hand in hand. You have to have the certificate, the security certificate first. Mm -hmm. But some of this will come out of this year's budget, and some of them come out of next year. Well, possibly, yes. I know. I know we have the funds. I just don't know which I line item it will come from. I'm not sure either. That's probably Patty might know the answer to that. She deals with the SOs budget, so. Well, we can still approve this uh, contingent upon you know checking into it and making sure things you know where it needs to be money we, available. We would not ask for something that we don't have. All right, ask for a motion, please. I move we approve an agreement between Navarra County Sheriff's Office and Unique Digital Technology LLC for customer care support. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Moore, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Yes, sir. Um, the uh, the statement of work for the uh, the actual certificate has to be signed uh, at least by tomorrow. If not by tomorrow, then we will hit a wall on the thirtieth of this month. Okay. So that, that has to be signed in order for them to assist us with the actual certificate um, support. Okay. And that's the $500 or maybe 200 and something. It depends on how long it takes. Okay. okay. It's built on time and material. Okay. We'll take care of it when we get it. <clears throat> uh, number 16. Number 16 is consideration of approving commissioner's annual road reports. This happens one time a year when they get to say how good the roads are out there. So. That doesn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, please. I'm making motion that we approve the commissioner's That's annual report. That's how long it took. Second. There you go. Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries.
Number 17 is consideration of approving the new IRS 2001 standard mileage business rate of 0 0.625 uh, a mile. This will be effective as of July 1st of 2022. I think we're at what? 058 right now? It is five. I think it's five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, just need a motion. And I'll make a motion of approving the new IRS 2021 standard mileage business rate of 0 0.0625 a mile. This will be effective as of July 1st, 2022. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Perry, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Now for the good stuff. Consideration uh, number 18 is consideration of approving to pay bills for JP4 without purchase order on June 27th, 2022. He had no idea what he, was <laughs> he, he didn't know what he was getting into, did he? This comes up when a lot of times, uh, especially with commissioners, if they have something that uh, needs to be taken care of immediately instead of coming to the auditor and, or calling the auditor and say, we need a purchase order to do blah, 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 and getting that all filled out. If a motor grader is in a ditch and needs to be pulled, you need a record to do it, you need a record right then. So sometimes I go ahead and do what it is that needs to be done and the purchase order will not have been done ahead of time. So it has, needs to appear on, to be taken care of and paid. That's what it amounts to. Who's going to get forgiveness and permission? Say what? Permission and, and for, easier forgiveness. Forgiveness uh, and permission. Yeah, that's kind of what it's all about. So we need a motion on this item, please, gentlemen. I'll make a motion that we approve pay bills for JP4 without purchase order on June 27, 2023. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number 19 is consideration of approving to pay bills for precinct three without purchase order on June 27, 2022. Yep. <laughs> we have some vendors that just do not get the memo that thou shalt call and get a PO number prior to the work performed. And I have crew members that drop stuff off and they depend on the vendor to do it when they should do it. And the vendor thinks they're going to do it before they get it done. And it's just a chronological poopa, if you may, that they get the PO after the work is performed and uh, the auditor's office frowns on that. So having said that. And ask me for forgiveness. Right? Ask me, yes, please forgive me. Don't beat me no more, boss. I move that we approve to pay bills for precinct three without purchase orders on June 27th, 2022. Second. Again, wonder. <laughs> but you're going to be holding the bag, buddy. Uh, <laughs> motion been made by Commissioner Moore, seconded by Commissioner Grant. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number 20, consideration of approving to pay bills for the jail without purchase orders on June 27, 2022. I don't know what the specific is, but it's the same thing. If there's a plumbing issue or an air conditioning issue, those are things that have to be yeah. taken care of immediately. So I would assume it's the same type of scenario. Thank you, ma'am. I'll, I'll make a motion of approving the paid, uh, paid bills to the jail without purchase orders on June 27, 2022. Thank you. Motion made by Commissioner Perry, seconded by Commissioner Grant. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We need one more motion, gentlemen. Guys, I want to make an announcement. Today is my 42nd married anniversary. I thought you were going to say birthday. And that's in a row. In a row. In a row. No hall passes. <laughs> so 42 years in a row. So. Congratulations. Thank you. I congratulate my wife. More than yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, one way or the other. <laughs> okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. 
Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Perry to adjourn. All in favor, please say bye. 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 Well, I know we're doing all that. I told Kim I got to take Jack to the fiscal. Yes. I was tired from staying in that. And simple I was given up already on the three hundred and fifty I think sure you want. Going to Do we have more than one thirty-five. Any leftovers? You can bring them over to three. Hey, what's John's yeah, answer? What what is John Gant's official title? Vice President. Well, the actual he has several titles. What's your situation? Official secretary there. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to go back all the way to the beginning to get all that. Okay. Okay. I'm good. Good morning. Thanks. Have a good one. And uh, I'll be sending. I'll be. I'll, I'll be signing the uh, certificate card. But you know, then again, Jerry and I are friends. So I have tagged her. I'll let her know.